Welcome back to another episode of the Second Son Podcast. Today's a special day because we have the men of the hour. Mike Donnelly, everybody. Pop it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, how's your week going? It's busy? It's good? It's always busy. Yeah, it's busy. It's going great. Keep moving. Don't have time, too much time to think. Mm-hmm. I love hearing the applause, by the way. Yeah. People say they see my signs everywhere, and I say I just love to see my name in lights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I call it shameless self-promotion. <laughs> hey, hey, if that's what you like, hey, <laughs> no shame in that. Um, so you're a commercial real estate broker, right? Correct. How long have you been in the game? I got my license in 2004, mm-hmm. so... I guess 18 years going on close to two decades before I did this, I did economic development, which to me was commercial real estate, but in a nonprofit world. Okay. So I've been doing it well over two decades. Okay. Why do you like real estate? What, what sparks, what gets you going? What, what makes you, I, I love working with business people and my drive is helping to create jobs in the community. That's how I kind of look at it. So I don't feel like I just do real estate. I do economic development, which is the art of, you know, helping businesses grow, thrive, survive, come to town, new businesses, mm-hmm. startups. And the whole reason, which the thing, what drives me is trying to improve our local economy so our kids will stay in Chico and get decent jobs so they can buy houses and, send their kids to school and not move away from the area. Mm-hmm. I've always felt that Chico was a little underemployed and that we needed better paying more jobs. So that was what really drove me through my business. And it, it's, uh, to this day, I still subscribe to that philosophy. Yeah. That's under, it's underpaid and underemployed. Yeah. It, it, and things have actually gotten better, I'd say, but you know, it's always been hard to get a job in this town for, especially, you know, high school kids or college students. And I remember that very well. And so I always thought we could do a little bit better on that. Mm. And so that, that was my calling basically. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I, I love working with businesses. I know how hard it is, but I like how excited, you know, business people get when they have a dream and they have challenges and they, they want to implement and uh, it's not easy, but they're driven and it, it's always fun being a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you about that. Um, what what's your background? What's, what how did you get into this? What's um, what did it first start? <sighs> okay, so <laughs> <laughs> how much time do we have? <laughs> uh, well, I'll just lay it out there. So, um, I love sports. I played baseball. Didn't know where to go to school. Really, uh, had a baseball tournament in Chico with American Legion ball. I uh, thought when I finished my professional baseball career, I'd get into broadcasting. Okay. And baseball career didn't quite work out. What and position I, did you play? I played outfield. Outfield. Yeah. So I know you have a question about me, uh, something that maybe people don't know. I threw Barry Bonds out at first base. <laughs> Just saying. Just, Just saying. We're just going to let it, <laughs> let, it, let it sit there. <laughs> no, when we were playing uh, American Legion ball, he, he played, he, he came to our school one day, you know, he's just a high school kid and, and we played against his team and uh, he, wa- he was just very Bonds. He was Bobby Bonds' kid at that point. Jeez. He wasn't a big shot or anything, but uh, at that, on that game, I was playing second base and he hit a sharp ground ball, a shot actually. Mm. And he was so fast, he almost beat the throw out to second, from second base to first. The guy had wheels. Really? So, but anyway, I threw him out. <laughs> He's like, I'll always keep that in my pocket. Yeah. Anybody that wants to ask. Good, good conversation starter. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, um, came at Chico State, yeah. worked for KCHO. I got into the news business. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I got, got away from sports and uh, had mm-hmm. a great news and broadcasting career. And while I was doing that, I met a lot of Chamber of Commerce people, economic development people, business people. And I always had that kind of on the side. I, I liked that world. And when it was time to switch careers, I decided to get into economic development, Mm -hmm. which is the art of creating jobs. And that turned into commercial real estate. So I, you know, just kind of the natural path that I was on. I was very lucky to have a path that was available to me that I took. Right on, right on. I mean, like baseball to real estate is 
completely different. <laughs> uh, what, like, you know, what made you just automatically, you know, become or just like it? Or was it like you already had family that was in business or did you like business already or? No. Um, th- so I had a journalism career. My, my dad was in sales. So that's where my business sense came from. He always Got encouraged it. me to get into sales. Right. And I think when I, you know, at the end of my broadcasting career, when I had kids, we had a house, we had the need to make a little bit more money, and it was just a natural time to maybe try to do something new, a new challenge. There it so is. I, yeah, that's it. You know, a lot of people sometimes go into real estate without, you know, having a desire or, like, having a reason for it. So I guess your reason was valid, you know. Yeah. yeah I. It was the path I was on. I didn't really know what I was getting into. Mm-hmm. And uh, I never felt like I was in real estate until someone called me a realtor and I had a realtor license and I thought, (laughs) I'm a realtor. (laughs) (laughs) But I I, I never sold houses and it was more like I was a business development person. And I didn't know if it was going to be successful, but it turned out pretty well. Really? So you you call yourself, so you're a realtor and you see the world as a, uh, you're, you're calling yourself an economic developer, but you're a realtor. Yeah, technically, I'm an as a broker associate. Broker, okay. yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so, so, right but but I do have a real estate license, and it's some of the basically it's the same thing. And you know, I but I couldn't sell you a house. I mean, I, I could, but you but wouldn't want me to sell you a house because yeah. I wouldn't really. <laughs> that's just not my thing. Right, right on, right on. Uh, what's one big thing that you've learned in real estate that you didn't quite know before? Because I know you probably learned a whole bunch of stuff in real estate, yeah. but like, what's one big thing in real estate that you didn't know before you got into it that like kind of changed your way of thinking or like made you more aware of? That's a a really good question. Um, The first thing I did not know was how hard it was, how hard it is. It's really, really hard. (laughs) (laughs) People think you just put a sign up, just cash the checks. Yeah. And there's a lot involved and there's a lot of heartbreak. You know, you always see the brochure about the big property and how, you know, wow, that guy's hot and he's got a lot going on, but you don't hear anybody bragging about the deals that they lost or things that went sideways. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, a, there's a lot of stress there, but, um, the other thing it taught me was to depend on myself, like my problem solving skills. Um, you know, I could seek help a lot of times I, I learned to seek help, mm. but sometimes I had to figure things out on my own and there's problems I'd never encountered before. And you just have to have some resilience and fortitude and figure it out. And you, you take, I take my job very seriously. You know, people put their trust with me. So I have, I have a fiduciary responsibility. So I need to, to show up and get the job done and figure it out. And that, that was something I had to learn. I didn't see that coming. Wow. But, so it made me stronger, I think. Wow. <laughs> Did you have any like mentors at the time or somebody like coaching or you was just like I just had to figure it out by myself like I, I've had I've been lucky to have mentors I have and there's a lot of people willing to give and uh, and I can name names I mean I could one person I would say in particular uh, Rodney Krebs who I used to work with okay. was just the sterling he just recently retired but people like that if I had a question I could always go to him and he always had an answer he'd help me figure it out and there, there's a few others like that too mm-hmm. so and you, you'll find people like that in life and it's always good to know, like take a moment to think, okay, that person's important and just to recognize that. And maybe someday you'll be that person too. Yeah. You know, and, and don't wait till someday, do it now. Right. You know, if you can see somebody that needs some help or be approachable. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. You have, um, I think before we came on record, I told you about like, you know, people saying good name about you. <laughs> uh <laughs> Like, you know, behind your back just because, you know, of who you are. And you have, like, you know, younger people, like, uh, following your footsteps. What advice do you have for, like, you know, people, uh, mentor- mentees or somebody who's following your footsteps? What do you, what advice would you give them? Or do you want them to know? No, I, um, boy, um, you know, follow your heart. Um, get out there and try things like you're trying things. I see that that if you don't know what to do, just try some things. Um, you know, live for the moment, be present. 
Mm-hmm. Be, be patient. It'll come. You know, everybody wants to be the CEO now, but, you know, give yourself some time. And um, don't wait for happiness. Be happy now. Be happy with what you have now. Right? Uh, my mom always says, you know, these are the good old days. So don't mm. wait until later to look back and say, oh, I, those are the good old days. Remember, right now you're living the good old days. And sometimes people, you know, they put off happiness because I got to get this thing. And when I get this thing, I'll be happy in the future. And you, you want to have goals. Yeah. But don't forget to be happy now. I guess that, and, and enjoy the ride right now. Enjoy the ride. That's beautiful. Clap that up. Yeah. That was beautiful. <laughs> That's so true. So sometimes we get caught up in like, man, where we got to like, just relax, just enjoy, you know, that's so true. That's so true. Um, odd question, but it's a bonus question. Who should I interview next? <laughs> okay. Well, there's always the usual suspects, right? The, the public people yeah. out there. Yeah. I wonder if Rodney would be on this show. He's my mentor. Rodney. <laughs> Good old I'll, Rodney. I'll ask him. I'm going to see him on Monday. But I, <laughs> he's one of the first people that came to my mind. But uh, he'd be kind of interesting. He's you know, I, I, I think, you know, I don't know who else has been on this show. But uh, if you're looking for more veteran type people, um, you know, it'd be yeah. interesting to have Dan Gonzalez, who's running Miriam Park on this show. Oh, yeah. You know, he's... Fifth Sun Graphics. Fifth Sun Graphics. So you guys can compare notes on the suns. <laughs> <laughs> I have the second sun. So there's the yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. That would be dope. Um, that wasn't the last question. This was the last question. <laughs> um, where do you see, like, Chico going in the next five years? Because, like, you're, you know, you're economic, you know, developer. You like seeing Chico growing economically. So, like, where do you see it heading as far as growth i it's getting big okay and i'm i'm not necessarily loving how things are going okay i'll just put it out there i always spoke my mind i felt like after the campfire chico should have had a general plan update or at least some discussion about it because we have grown so fast since the campfire Mm -hmm. and I'm assuming they're still following the general plan, but it, things have all changed. And I just think we need to pause and say, hey, where are we going? Because I th- I think it's it's on steroids right now. It's, really? It's changing. Um, I, I'd like to see the downtown uh, be revitalized. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I'd like to see some attention put into, you know, rehabbing existing buildings instead of just building yeah. tons of new structures Mm -hmm. Um, it's just how economics works so i'm not saying i see it going this way but this is kind of where i'd I'd like to see it go but this i think the train's leaving the station right now where we have a lot of momentum and growth you know uh, you're going to see some new projects coming down the pike and i see no signs of things slowing down right now Mm -hmm. so it's chico's just going to keep growing and we I, i would stress that we need to have good plan growth Plan put growth. some thought into the how we grow. Put some planning into it. Okay, yeah, because there's no <laughs> nobody's like really <laughs> planning. <laughs> well, I, I I think we could use a little more planning. You know, a little all, more. Yeah, I mean, all these new people, all these homes being built. I mean, it, it is what it is. But yeah. they're all going to go to Upper Park and Five Mile and Bear Hole, and it's going to get crowded out there. So yeah, I think we need to, you know, make create maybe some new parks, okay. um, redirect people, maybe aquatic centers, yeah. or, or just think about where people are going to recreate and mm-hmm. shop mm-hmm. and how our, you know, Highway 99 is going to look, you, you know, where people, how, how they're going to drive, yeah. where they're going to go. Yeah. Do you think it's, um, like, as far as, like, planning, do you think it's because, like, whoever is doing the planning in the city, is it, because they have a short term and then it gets switched over to somebody else who has a different direction and they get, you know, they like switch roles. Is it, you get what I'm saying by that? Is it like, yeah, yeah. is it because of different vision? I, I don't think it's the vision as much as just the economics right now. Okay. That, 
you know, we had the campfire. Now we have a crazy busy economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's cheap money, low interest rates, although those are going up. And there's just a lot of money to be made. And this is probably the time to build and develop. So it's just they're following the, the, the roadmap that the city already created. Mm -hmm. But now I think we probably need to start looking at a new roadmap. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, yeah, that, that was pretty much it. I'm glad you came on the show. Um, I really appreciate your time. James, I appreciate being here. Yeah. I'm honored that you asked me, and I'm having a lot of fun, and uh, thanks. And yeah. I have some other ideas for guests, so I'll let you know. For sure, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening to the Second Sun Podcast. Remember, if you're watching, make sure to like and subscribe. I know you're watching. Um, you know that you're watching, so just get support, like, and subscribe. Also, if you want to find uh, Mike Donnelly, if you're interested in any com commercial real estate, where can they find you at? Mike at cbcnorcal.com. For sure. Well, there you have it. See you guys later on the next episode. Peace.